The beauty of the example of the Prophet وسلم, is that there isn't a single area of his life that doesn't set a higher standard for you to aim with yours. And then the beauty of the Sahaba is that with all of their differences, their different personalities, their different beings, you have a blueprint in each of them of how you could be the best version of yourself. And that's what this deen is about. It's about striving not just to be satisfactory, but to be as prophetic as possible by following the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu in hopes that one day you get to be with him in the highest level of paradise. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, وَلِي كُلِّنْ دَرَجَاتُ مِمَّا عَمِلُوا that everyone will have their degree in Jannah in accordance with that which they used to do, in accordance with their deeds. And the scholars say that entrance into Jannah is through La ilaha illallah and the manazil, the stations that you achieve in Jannah are with your a'mal, are with your deeds. And so you have darajat in Jannah, degrees in Jannah of righteousness, and you have darakat, degrees of wickedness in Jahannam. And if the first and the last of all of mankind were put in one darajah of Jannah, it would fit them all. But everyone needs to strive for the highest level. Now there's one part of the Quran that talks about two gardens, the believer having two gardens. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they will be given their reward twice for what they patiently endured and they repel evil with good. So Allah mentions two rewards. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ And for the one who fears standing before his Lord and being held accountable, there are two gardens. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further says in Surah Al-Rahman, وَمِنْ دُونِهِمَا جَنَّتَانِ And below them are two gardens. So some of the scholars, they said that perhaps there is a superiority of one garden over the other. So there are higher gardens than others, and this is what's being spoken about. So for example, in Surah Al-Rahman, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala mentions about the first set of gardens, فِيهِمَا عَيْنَانِ تَجْرِيَانِ that in them are a pair of gushing springs. So the first one is superior to the second one. And then some scholars said, no, actually every single believer has two gardens in Jannah, one for their good deeds and one for abstaining from sin. So this is for every believer that you have two gardens ta'ala, one for the things that you put forth and the other for the things that you abstain from. And this is the place of your reward. And this is the place of your replacement for the things that you abstain from in this life. But then when you talk about the degrees, you're going to see stars above you, or hopefully you will be the stars that are above the others. And Imam al-Dahaq rahimahullah, he said that some of them will be better than others. And those who are placed in a higher position will realize their position. And those who are at a lower grade will not feel like anyone has been placed above them because it wouldn't be Jannah otherwise. So if you are amongst the privileged with a higher rank, you know you're amongst the privileged of a higher rank. And if you're of a lower degree, then you don't realize or you don't feel like anyone is above you. And the Prophet وسلم, said that the people of paradise will see the people of the ghuraf, as we said, like stars in the remote part of the sky. In another narration, the Prophet وسلم, specified like a glittering star because of the difference of grades. The Prophet وسلم, did not want us to become a complacent people. He didn't want us to think, well, I'm okay with that. No, rather he wanted us to be those stars. And that's why when Mu'adh radiallahu anhu said, I heard the Prophet وسلم, say that whoever performs the five daily prayers and fasts the month of Ramadan and performs the Hajj or pays the Zakat in some narrations, Allah will forgive him no matter what, whether he made Hijrah or whether he sat in the place that he was born. And I said, Ya Rasulullah, should I go tell people about this? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive them so long as they say La ilaha illallah and do the bare minimum, they do the obligatory deeds. And the Prophet ﷺ said, no Mu'ad, leave them to strive, let them work. Because Jannah has a hundred degrees and between every two degrees is like the distance between the heavens and the earth. And the highest one of them is Al-Firdaus and above it is the throne and it is the best grade of paradise. The rivers of Jannah flow from that place. And so when you ask Allah, ask Him for Al-Firdaus. So 
He's telling Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, don't let people become complacent and say, well, in that case, I'll just make sure I do the bare minimum because then they might end up falling short of the bare minimum and missing out on Jannah as a whole. And so in this hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu mentions a hundred degrees of Jannah. And Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he comments on this because someone might say, well, does that mean Jannah is only a hundred degrees? He said, no, because just like when the Prophet Sallallahu says that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has 99 names, that doesn't mean Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has only 99 names. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentions 100 grades of paradise or 100 degrees of paradise, that doesn't mean that there are only 100 degrees of paradise. Rather, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is conveying a concept here that there are higher degrees in paradise that you should strive towards. Now, just like when we talked about palaces and some of the other things, there are general qualities that allow you to ascend and then there are specific deeds. And in general, when you talk about qualities, the highest levels in Jannah, as Imam al-Dhahbi rahimahullah said, are for people that cried at night with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and smiled at people during the day. So those that used to face Allah at night with tears and those that used to face people during the day with a smile. Those are the people that end up in the highest ranks with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions those who strove. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يستوي القاعدون من المؤمنين غير أولي الضرر والمجاهدون في سبيل الله بأموالهم وأنفسهم فضل الله المجاهدين بأموالهم وأنفسهم على القاعدين درجة وكلا وعد الله الحسن وفضل الله المجاهدين على القاعدين أجرا عظيما Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those believers who stay home other than those who have a disability are not equal to those who strive with their wealth and with their selves in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has raised such people who strive through their wealth and their lives to a rank above those who stay at home by degrees. And even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised all of the believers their specific reward, those who strive have a tremendous reward over those who stay home. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guaranteed a significant reward for those who significantly strove for his sake. Then there are specific deeds. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi mentioned those who sponsor orphans or those who show excellence in raising their own two daughters. So he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Ana wa kafirul yatim, I and the one who takes care of an orphan will be like these two fingers." So that's how close you'll be to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi Obviously, Rasulullah sallallahu is in the highest of the highest of Jannah. And in another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever raises two daughters, he really strives to raise those daughters well, will be in Jannah with me like these two fingers. So if you parent like the Prophet ﷺ, or sponsor an orphan, take care of orphans like the Prophet ﷺ, then you will be with the Prophet ﷺ like these two fingers, either like this or like this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also will raise the status of parents who raise their children to make dua. So this is now the effect of that type of parenting. The Prophet sallallahu said that Allah azza wa will be raising a person in paradise and that person will be asking as they are ascending through paradise, Ya Rabb, how did I get all of this? What's happening here? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Waladuka astaghfara lak, because your child sought forgiveness for you. Who taught the child to make istighfar and to seek forgiveness? It's a good parent who teaches the child to do so. And so because the child does that, imagine this parent that is ascending through the degrees of paradise. And then with the Qur'an, the Prophet wasallam said that the reciter of the Qur'an will be told to recite until the very last ayah. And so the last ayah that you memorize will determine the rank that you achieve. And so naturally, the one who memorizes more Qur'an will be elevated degree upon degree upon degree. Now, if you think about that hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu said that there are 10 rewards for every single letter of the Qur'an, not just word of the Qur'an, here you see the darajat, the positions and the degrees that come with people who memorize more of the Qur'an. And of course, those who apply that memorization will have higher and higher and higher degrees of paradise. So we know that paradise has at least the same amount of degrees as ayat in the Qur'an. 
And then you have those that bore trials for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, this starts with the shuhada, the martyrs. And the best of the shuhada are those who fought in the first rows and they do not turn away their faces from the battlefield. And these are the people who occupy the highest positions in paradise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will smile at them. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala smiles at anyone, then they will not be called to account. So that's the first level. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about trials in general. This is a powerful hadith in Ibn Hibban. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that verily a man may have a manzila, a rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he doesn't achieve by his good deeds. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to put that person to trial until he reaches the rank that has been destined for him. SubhanAllah. So the trials come your way until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates you to the rank that he wants you to be in. Again, these are the people that are rewarded with the highest place because of their patience. And sabr can take you places in Jannah that your good deeds just cannot. And then you have the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, that a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, you are more beloved to me than myself. And you are more beloved to me than my family. You are more beloved to me than my children. And sometimes I'm at home and I remember you. And so I can't help myself. I'll come and I'll find you. And if I want to see you, I can see you in the masjid. But then I remember that there will come a time that I will die, Ya Rasulullah. My death will come and your death will come. And I realize that even if we enter into Jannah, you're going to be in this place with the prophets. And I'm afraid that even if I enter Jannah, I'm not going to be able to see you anymore, Ya Rasulullah. SubhanAllah, I mean, look at this, right? Like, I don't have the good deeds, I don't have the trials, but all I know is that when I want to see you in this dunya, it has a heavenly feel that I can come see you, Ya Rasulullah, and you're more beloved to me than all of the possessions and people of this world. So I'm thinking about Jannah, which is supposed to be greater than this world. Ya Rasulullah, I'm worried you're going to be in that high place. And even if I get in, where am I going to be? And the Prophet ﷺ did not say anything, except that Jibreel salam came down with the ayah, وَمَنْ يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءَ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا That whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger will be amongst those who have earned His favor. The Messengers, the Prophets, those that were affirmers of the truth, those who were shuhada, those who were martyrs, those who were righteous, and how excellent of companionship that is. And remember a man who comes to the Prophet ﷺ and testifies that, Ya Rasulullah, the only thing I've prepared for the Day of Judgment is that I love you. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Anta ma man ahbabt. You will be with the one whom you love. And Anas anhu said that that's the best thing I heard because I thought to myself, I love Rasulullah ﷺ, I love Abu Bakr, and I love Umar. And so when you think about loving for the sake of Allah, that doesn't necessarily just mean from the same generation. And just like when two people love each other for Allah's sake in the same generation, they're at this high place. The greatest way to ascend is to love the person who was most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the only way to ascend higher beyond your family, beyond your friends and beyond your deeds. Abu Umamah radiallahu anhu reported that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, do the people of paradise visit one another? And he said that those on the higher level will visit those on the lower, and those of the lower level will not visit those on the higher level, except for those who love each other for the sake of Allah. They will go anywhere that they wish on camels with beautiful saddles. And so if you love the Prophet ﷺ, you get to be with the Prophet ﷺ. And if you love the Prophet ﷺ, then you will try to be like the Prophet ﷺ. And if you try to be like the Prophet ﷺ, then certainly through both of those routes, you get to be with the Prophet ﷺ in the highest level of paradise. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah irji'i 
إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي